Thanks for rolling by again, guys. Sheikh Mohammed, thanks for being Jazakallah here. Jazakallah khairan. Now, last week you were talking about um, the man's role, and I got confused, and I thought it meant I was like the king dictator, so I started like pushing people around in my house. And they said, hey, man, you can't be pushing us around. That's not the right thing. So I said, I'm going to ask Sheikh Mohammed, and he's going to tell me, so I'm going to ask you. Well, definitely, as uh, many people misunderstood the concept of the guardianship, they thought, well, that means I'm the king at home, I'm the boss. Uh, so they boss their wives. And that leads to conflicts because, you know, this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant a leader to be a merciful leader, to lead with wisdom, uh, not to be harsh hearted, not to. Uh, make decisions based on his mind without consulting his wife. If the Prophet وسلم, was the leader of all the believers, exactly. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the Quran to obey him, من يطع الرسول فقد أطاع الله. Whoever obeys the messenger of Allah, he indeed obeys Allah himself. And it is mandatory upon us to obey and not to discuss with the Prophet وسلم, to obey all his commands. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him, as in Surah Ali Imran, with his bounty on him, of giving him this quality of being gentle and merciful, saying, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ and this ayah was actually revealed after the battle of Uhud. Commenting on the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ when he dealt with those who ran away from the battlefield with gentleness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him saying that, as the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. You dealt with them gently. Had you been severe to them and harsh-hearted, they would have broken away from you. So, afu anhum, pass over their faults, pardon them, and ask for forgiveness for them, and consult them in the affair. Those beautiful qualities of being gentle, merciful, and consulting those who are under your guardianship, were given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was the leader of all the believers. And I think we should really follow him, follow his footsteps, since he was made to be our role model, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I understand that there is one hadith that uh, this man mostly claiming on that because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, if I were allowed uh, a person to bow, if Allah would allow a person to bow to another person, then I will make the believing woman to bow uh, to their husband. What, what do you have to say about it? Okay, uh, once again, the hadith says that the Prophet wasallam oh, says, if I were going to ask anybody to bow down, to prostrate, then I would have ordered a woman to bow down out of respect to her husband. Mm -hmm. And it's not uh, as a mean of worship, it's only a mean of respect. Mm -hmm. This is to explain to the wife the rights of her husband upon her, of being obedient to him, paying due respect to him, and being so on. Being grateful. Many people misunderstand that, misinterpret this hadith, and they use it as a reference that, you know, I'm a little god at home. <laughs> I'm the king of the house. <laughs> you know? La. <laughs> a rifq and gentleness is a quality which the Prophet ﷺ adopted and he commanded us to have it as one of our good manners. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alayka bil rifq. Stick to kindness and gentleness. And he also says that whenever there is gentleness in anything, it beautifies it. 
And whenever a rifq or gentleness, gentleness is withdrawn from anything, that thing becomes disgraced. When you meet people who are, who are shidda, who are, who are rough and they're harsh very hearted. tough with hearts with people, and you see that, that really beauty has been removed from them because they're so shidda with everything. They're so and hard they, on everything they see, everything they do so is, is rough. That even like if it's at home, it kills the love. Mm -hmm. And if it's for dawah, he's talking it to... It kills the dawah. He will kill the dawah too, mm -hmm. because people will just, like, as soon as they see him, they will just run away or yeah. something. Remember in physics, yeah. we all studied that every action has... A natural has reaction. A natural, natural reaction. reaction. Exactly. It's equal to it in power, and it is in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do not ever assume that by being harsh-hearted and overcoming your wife. Sometimes people, you know, very, very severe on their wives. And they assume that that would bring love. That would never happen. It only happens as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And be kind and humble to those who follow you of the believers. So similarly, be kind and humble to your wife, to your children, to your family members. That would really generate love and would maintain happiness in the in the family well, we always say you know you attract more flies with honey than you do with vinegar true so the nicer you are the sweeter you are people are going to want to be around you the more stinky and vinegary you are people want yeah. to hang out does that mean because i heard on on the other hand it happens in the time of the caliphate omar where uh, a, a, a sahaba came to his house to complain about his wife making so much noise behind him and then when he went there he gave salam and it was not responded by the caliphate omar so he waited and he saw Omar's wife was shouting mm. at, at him. That's true. <laughs> and then when he, he came out, he saw that guy was going away. He called, what's up? So he, he says, well, I want to complain to you about my wife, but I heard your wife is, <laughs> is, is even, so I, I stopped asking. That's Omar who yeah. says that before Islam, he was so harsh hearted to the point yes. that he buried one of his daughters alive. That was in Jahiliya before yeah. Islam. But look how Islam beautifies the followers of Islam and makes them really devoutly obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is Umar, mm -hmm. and he learns that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would allow his wives to argue with him, and he was being gentle and kind to them. So Umar adopted the same manners of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, since he was in a charge. Mm -hmm. But he, he even said to, 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 the, to the guy, he said, whatever duties that she's doing is supposed to be my duty. This is something like that. Yes. So he appreciated that from her, mm -hmm. and that's why he let her slide. He passed over her <laughs> faults, even if she was at fault. You know, Allah that, that, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uh, reminded us with the blessings of marriage as one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the universe, mm -hmm. Surah Al-Rum, Ayah number 21, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً So from amongst his verses and signs that he created for you from amongst yourselves Spouse. Spouses. Yeah. As wajan, wives, why? So that you might you may find repose in them. Mm -hmm. And he created between you love and compassion. If there is no love nor compassion, there mm -hmm. will never be repose there and rest. Mm -hmm. You will never have a comfort nor a peace of mind. While the main purpose of having, you know, of getting married and living uh, in a marriage life, you know, it's all about responsibilities, but is to have a repose and a peace of mind. That can never be achieved unless if the leader is wise and gentle mm -hmm. with his family members, especially with his wife. Mm -hmm. And, and, and on top of that, man also needs love. It's a part of motivation. That's why they expect his wife to exactly. motivate him. Exactly. But if, he's, if he doesn't know how to create love, then he's not a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you take that love that you, 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 spurn in, you, you grow in your home mm -hmm. by being gentle and by being full of mercy and having compassion with your wife and your children, Mm -hmm. You take this outside to the, to the people that are around you and you show them mercy and love and compassion, then yes. inshallah it'll grow and True. it'll be a world of love, mercy, and compassion. You know what? I'm noticing that Abrahman is being quiet, uh, perhaps <laughs> because he's, uh, he's constantly. No, actually, actually, 
I'm uh, mostly learning <laughs> than, than talking. <laughs> this is very important, yeah, yeah. as a matter of fact, Abdul Rahman, to prepare yourself uh, uh, mentally, course. spiritually, uh, in addition to financially, of course, to get ready for <laughs> the big event. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ad-dunya mata'a wa khayru mata'iha az-zawjatu salihah. This worldly life is all about pleasure. And the best of its pleasure is a righteous wife. And through kindness and gentleness, education, you can make your wife a righteous wife. Of course, based on the best election you made initially. But through harshness and being severe and harsh-hearted, that will never create love and compassion and will never make your wife a righteous wife. So that you'll be missing a lot, which is khayru mata'id dunya, the best of the pleasure of the worldly life. Yeah, you could, you could uh, be rough on your wife, you know, and, and make her wear niqab and, and make her do things like this, but then, but then she hasn't reformed herself at all. Mm. So you run into a situation where she's still going to be a, maybe a bad person, but she looks like she's a good person, but she's not, <laughs> you know, because there's no... Not only right, that, no righteous uh, wife people there. sometimes be, make a big deal out of minor things. When the husband goes home and the food is not ready. My pots are cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal. Well, the Prophet ﷺ was not like that. Yeah. Yes, I understand that you were working all day, you were hungry, but there has to be a reason. Yeah, she was so, working all day you know, with the kids. Pass over her faults. Mm -hmm. Ignore sometimes. The Prophet وسلم, in his last speech in the farewell uh, Hajj, uh, he said, Man kana الآخر, Whoever believes in Allah in the last day and in the last day, let him not harm his neighbor. And he went on and on until he came to Wastawsu bin Nisa'i Khaira and be good to women, whether it's a wife. Sister, sister, daughter, but a daughter. Mm -hmm. and he says, Since the first woman, Eve, Adam's wife, was created from a bent rib, she was actually created from the uppermost part of the rib. And the Prophet ﷺ says, the most bent part of the rib is the upper part. So if you want to enjoy your woman, if you want to enjoy your wife and have pleasure with her and a happy life, don't stay. You gotta Exactly. You gotta, <laughs> enjoy, you, you gotta keep her this way. Understand mm -hmm. that she was created this way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. created her with this nature. And if you would try to straighten you crack. that break. part of the rib, mm -hmm. you will break it. Mm -hmm. And he sallallahu alayhi wa explained how would you break it that will lead to divorce. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> There's one question that I want to ask because the people over here now understand the kawama, responsibility, or they call it like uh, leadership. And they took partially for what they think is good for them and they threw it partially. C can you explain something like that? Like they're what? ignorant of the rulings of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, kawama also means leadership, mm -hmm. but it's not only leadership. Leadership with wisdom, leadership and guardianship, leadership and responsibilities, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not only being um, a dictator, you know, just making a decision without going back to anybody else, without considering the opinion of anybody else. I heard uh, Muhammad that, Salah Salah, oh, sorry. Mean, I'm sorry, meaning that he says like, uh, you have to listen to me, is that what you're talking about, dictatorship? <laughs> my, my way or my way way the highway. My yeah. way is the highway. <laughs> <laughs> My way is the only way. Yeah. There's only one way, and that's, this isn't Burger King. La, no, <laughs> that's totally wrong. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, Men are guardians and protectives over women. He never said men are masters of women. There is a big difference. I understand that many people, many husbands, take it as we're the masters, we're the leaders, without understanding the responsibilities. That means they never keep balance. And according, and in, that yeah. leads to destruction, which follows an oppression and suppression. Do you think that's because a lot of men maybe feel that, 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 that because of the, uh, the, the marks are so high, the dowries are so high, that they're actually buying a wife instead of, a, instead of a getting a, a life partner? Well, sometimes when the, the couple have complications prior to the wedding and the marriage, 
that leaves some negative effects and bitter taste that remains afterward. But a wise person should let go, pass over those uh, bad memories, and remember that now she is his wife and his life partner, his life mate. You wanted to ask about something, Abdul Rahman? First, uh, I just had two questions in mind. First, like, uh, it's a comment. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, husbands nowadays, like I noticed, like you said, Sheikh, and what's really bad about, about them is that they, they, they misunderstand religion and they use religion thinking that religion told them to be masters on their wives. Like you said, so they, they're using religion for that, and they tell them, ah, in religion. And they I think after talking so much about the real meaning of uh, this qawam and oh, the guardianship, yeah. it has become uh, clear. Mm -hmm. And we have to clear that to others and explain to them their responsibilities, their duties before their rights. Could you summarize okay, it? Could you, yeah. could you summarize it? Uh, well, Some qawama, key points uh, about the qawam. Just for you, Ya Abdul Rahman. <laughs> 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 okay. I mean, I'm the youngest here, so... <laughs> To really understand and act upon the real meaning of qawamah, there are three components you have to keep in mind. The first component is taqwa Allah, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ Fear Allah and keep your duties to Him wheresoever you are. So that when you go home and behind closed doors, you do not think that you're by yourself. You do whatever you want to do. <laughs> and no one is watching over you. Allah because is Allah you. is ever watching over, watching you. over you. Accordingly, anything you will do mm -hmm. towards your wife, towards anybody else, you will keep in mind that Allah is ever watching. And Allah is going to account you for that, whether good or bad. So when that uh, understanding is settled deeply in your heart and mind, I believe that before acting, you will think. You will think really what would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing. This is very, very important understanding. The second component is to be well acquainted with the real meaning of the qawamah, as we did mention before. So you keep balance between leadership and responsibilities so that you fulfill your duties before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards your huh. wife, your family members, which would require you to comply with the commands and the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to consult his followers in the affair, we are the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's our role model. Uh, we keep mentioning the name of this great companion. She's a lady, Asma bint Yazid. She was very, very clever very intelligent woman and she was courageous she would ask questions and give comments Asma ibn Yazid came once to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi and said O Messenger of Allah I'm representing a great number of women behind me they all agree to every word I'm gonna say mm -hmm. go ahead what's your presentation what's your statement she said Ya Rasulullah Allah has sent you to men and women as well, not only to men. Mm -hmm. And Allah has made men excel women in things like they get to attend Salatul Jama'ah 27 times more yeah. than if they pray at home. We can't. It was not imposed on us. I mean, yes, we may, but it was not imposed on us. I think uh, she was not aware that some men today would ignore Salatul Jama'ah and would exchange it for just praying at home. Yes, it is. it's happening. Yeah. So they, they envied men for being capable to go to attend Salatul Jama'ah and they have to. And Salatul Jumu'ah, which is not mandatory on women. Yes. Salatul Jana'ah is the funeral. It's only men who can attend it mm -hmm. and so on. So all of that, men excel women in that respect. And men, only were commanded to go to battlefield whenever it's required and join the military. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're not. And whenever they go, we guard their wealth and we take care of their children. And if they die as shuhada, they go to paradise and where is their children? Where do we fit in all of that? <laughs> uh, we don't get the same treatment. So the Prophet ﷺ turned to Asma bint Yazid and he was so impressed. 
He addressed his companions and all the prisons and he said that, have you ever heard any better statement than her statement? She had made the best presentation. Yes, yeah, ma. Go back and tell everybody who's waiting for my answer that being a good wife of your husband, obeying him, following him, taking care of him and his belongings, raising his children, would give you an equal word of all of what you mentioned, attending the salah in jama'ah, going to the battlefield, and even dying as a murder for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's equal to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give assignments to men which suits them. And he gives assignments to women which suits them. And if everyone fulfills their duties and take care of their business, they're equal and even in respect of reward. Who knows better your role? You or your creator? Exactly. You know, that's a... Now we talked about two components of the qawama to be really a guardian and a true protector of your wife. The first was the fear of Allah and understanding that he's ever all watching over you. Mm -hmm. The second is to be well acquainted of the real meaning of the qawama. The third is to adopt good manners. Mm -hmm. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, أحسنكم خلقا أقربكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة Those of you who have the best manners are the closest to me on the day of judgment. So get to choose. You know, it's a beautiful thing. You enjoy being well-mannered. You enjoy being loved by others and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Control your temper. Adopt patience as your attitude, especially at home. Or raising voice upon the husband, things like that? We have to understand that there are situations where a person loses his temper. Yeah, of course. But it's best to know how to control yourself at the time of anger. Mm -hmm. The Prophet وسلم, prescribed uh, several treatments. Uh, all of them would work whenever you get angry. He said that, seek refuge with Allah from Satan. Because <laughs> anger, <laughs> anger is all from fire. Yes, from Don't fire. you see how the face of the angry person would turn red? Mm -hmm. yeah. And Satan is from fire. And nothing extinguishes fire better than Satan. Water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, water distinguishes. Water. Water. <laughs> so what to do? Perform wudu. Mm -hmm. And when you seek refuge with Allah from Satan, he runs away. Mm -hmm. Disperses. <laughs> and when you perform wudu, you extinguish fire and you suppress that anger. And he also prescribed, change your position. If you're exactly. sitting, stand up. If you're standing, sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, just walk away. Mm -hmm. And ignore. Take it easy. But confrontation at the time of anger would definitely lead to? Violence. Violence, Violence yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, imagine wrestling at home. <laughs> we're wrestling federation at home. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are you ready, Abdurrahman? Bismillah. <laughs> or being a real garden? La, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> I think... Uh, Are you ready for world wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people think... Ha having the Prophet as, uh, as, as a role model so will make me a good leader, inshallah. Exactly, inshallah. And a good husband. We all pray for that. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, you know I, I think by now, inshallah, uh, I should leave you. And hopefully, inshallah, I would see you next time. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you for the tea. Love. You're welcome. My pleasure. I hope it was good. I made it myself. <laughs>